Hello and welcome to another Timeless video. After playing Felia in Brawl, I wanted to try it out in Timeless. So this 2-mana two 2-2 two -two dog has Flash, and then when it attacks we can exile up to one other target in online permanent and return it to its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. If we control that permanent, Felia also picks up a plus one plus one counter. So one of the better creatures to flicker with Felia, as we discovered in our Brawl deck, is Recruiter of the Guard, which can search up any creature with toughness 2 or less in our deck and put it in hand. So that also includes our various incarnations. We've got Grief at 4 mana, which can make the opponent discard a card, and then Solitude to exile a creature, gaining the opponent life equal to that creature's power. So these are two cards we can also potentially evoke on turn 1 by pitching an appropriate card, and then we have a few ways to bring them back on turn 1 as well. The best one is Ephemerate, which will flicker a creature, and then we also get to rebound on the following turn, so we can potentially play Grief, then with the trigger on the stack Ephemerate, which will re-trigger it, taking a second card from the opponent's hand, and then uh, before we take our next turn basically, we get to flicker it again, taking a third card from the opponent's hand, and then with Solitude we can start exiling creatures instead. So these are both extremely powerful, and then besides Ephemerate we can also reanimate them after initially evoking them, so that's another powerful tool this deck has available, and reanimate also pairs very well with Troll of Casa Doom, which we can swamp cycle to get maybe a swamp or even a godless shrine, and then later Later we can bring it back as a 6-5 that's hard to block, and it's also black card we can occasionally pitch to our grief, so it also helps there. And then rounding out the deck, we have a few more ETB effects with Orcish Bowmasters, another staple in the format, awesome to flicker with Felia as well. And then a Juggernaut Peddler, I know it's an alchemy card, but we're mostly just pitching it to Grief and Solitude, and being a black-white card makes it quite flexible there. Occasionally we'll also cast it to maybe exile a non-land card from the opponent's hand, replacing it with a Juggernaut. So this can be one of the cleaner answers to an opposing Flage, which otherwise if we discard it with Grief, the opponent can still escape it out of the graveyard, and that's a problematic card for us to deal with, so ideally we exile it with a Peddler, maybe Solitude can exile it too, but then it's often already too late. And then we also have two copies of Swords to Plowshares, which can be another answer to a Flage for instance. And then the mana base is Couple Basics, which we can uh, fetch for with Marsh Flats or search up with Troll in the case of our Swamps, then an Igancho as a Channel Land, and then uh, lots of Black White Duels with Concealed Courtyard, Godless Shrine is something we can also fetch for, and then the one Backstreet which we can also maybe get with our Marsh Flats or Troll to Surveil, and then a Silent Clearing in case we're flooding out can also draw us a card. And then I guess I forgot to mention Leyline of Sanctity, a great card to have in your opening hand to stop opposing this card effects, of which there are many in this format, thinking of all the grief decks, and then if it's stuck in our hand or if we draw it later, we can also potentially pitch it to Solitude, so it's not a completely dead draw. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing a Lurus deck, so it could be Energy. We have a Grief with Ephemerate, so that's always exciting. Sign me up. And then pitch the Troll, so go full control here. Bowmasters can first take a card and then ephemerate, but I imagine we'll ephemerate here. Okay, never mind, it's a blue black counterspell deck. So, Tamyo, we can source to plowshares, although they could maybe wait to deploy it until they have brainstorm. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing that's too threatening. Can just take double mana drain, then. Next turn Ephemerate Resolves once again, can take Sauron's Ransom, and then in the meantime time yeah, we can Swords, leaving them with Brainstorm. Could also take the Brainstorm maybe, so they can't hide any cards with the uh, mechanic. So sure, Ephemerates. And then go after Mana Drain I suppose. Hope they didn't top deck a removal spell for grief. And have another look. Eh, opponent just uh, drew a land. So, yeah, Tamiyo is not too threatening. Ransom is card advantage. So, could also take the Ransom, let him keep the mana drain and potentially main phase Orcish Bowmasters. Don't hate that idea. And then 
pretty easy to play around Mana Drain when you know about it. Now a Solitude doesn't seem super necessary. So don't have the fastest clock, but with what our opponent has in hand, still pretty good. Swords also doesn't gain the opponent any life when we exile Tamiya with it. They might be waiting for like a brainstorm to immediately draw and uh, transform Tamiya. They can maybe get a brainstorm back, for instance. So opponent does have mana drain for protection here. I think it's reasonable to steal swords. If they brainstorm in response what happens, then they didn't get to plus time yet, so we get to take it out. So we can force them to uh, mana drain, and then we might still have solitude for Tamiyo, or we can ignore it. Alright, that's fine. Now Peddler means I can pitch solitude for Tamiyo, or I can just cast a Peddler, let them keep Tamiyo. Mystic Sanctuary can put Brainstorm on top, or Ransom. Although this doesn't draw three. They can use the mana drain mana on Lurus, which is maybe a reason to wait on my removal. Yeah, let's try that instead. Just attack. If they go for Lurus next turn, I can uh, play the Peddler, turn it into a Juggernaut, or use Solitude. And also if they draw with Bowmasters out, they take a bunch of damage, so... Happy to pass. Feli has a good draw. Opponent also did not put Lurus in hand, so they must have drawn something they can cast. Maybe their own Bowmasters. Shieldred's Edict. I could sacrifice Felia. Otherwise, probably just get rid of the Bowmasters at this point. And then I could just play Felia now while they're tapped out. Or wait for them to maybe fetch with the Flooded Strands in case they get another Surveil Land, which might affect their decision. Opponent is fetching. And Sanctuary getting back. Maybe Brainstorm now, yep. So they can transform Tamiyo. Could still Solitude to exile it. But uh, sure, we'll play Felia. And then in response to Brainstorm, I can cast a Solitude. Opponent, I guess, getting another clue out of the deal. That's fair, so maybe should have just gone for it before they drew the Brainstorm. Then I don't need to flicker anything since we have lethal on board. So our opponent needs to draw into like a fatal push, maybe. Alright, they did. So play Peddler. Can flicker Peddler just to grow Felia. Opponent had a Bowmasters, which they weren't able to cast, so that's now a Juggernaut. And I think we can beat a Juggernaut. Opponent does still have the clue to draw. So yeah, had I maybe timed my Solitude a little earlier, they don't have the clue. And we're looking even better, but should still get there. And Opponent should have waited to sack the clue, since now Peddler can make another Juggernaut. I guess they must have drawn a land. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Opponent's got a Gigantas Companion, so likely the energy deck. And how about a Grief with Ephemerates? Sign me up. So turn one. Grief. Can pitch the Reanimate to keep Paddler as a turn two play, since we don't need Reanimate for Grief now. 
Or we could keep reanimate to steal whatever we make the opponent discard, which is also an option. Yeah, maybe an Ajani is better than playing a Peddler here, since we get to triple discard them anyway. Sure. Counterpoint is if we draw Solitude, then Peddler is something we can pitch to it as well. So first, take a look. Opponents indeed on energy, double Raptor, Prison, Fable. So their hands, quite stacked. I wouldn't be able to reanimate Raptor and get the trigger. I mean, still Raptor for starters. And then probably Raptor again and Fable. But then I don't have a win condition if they prison my grief. Although I guess they may not have the energy to keep it up. Although I guess if we don't take prison now, then they can prison the grief before I get to rebound Ephemerate. So I think it's still prison here. And then they probably don't have an answer for grief. And we get to take the Raptor. Alright, they drew a land at least. And then I may want to sacrifice a silent clearing already, or I can fetch my surveil land to give me a bit of card selection in case we want to cast a recruiter, for instance. So yeah, for now reanimate, just bring back amp to raptor isn't all that exciting. And then I could surveil now on the off chance that I mill some expensive creature that I can then immediately reanimate. Felia could be decent to reanimate, since I can start attacking with it a turn sooner that way. Pass it back. Opponent hopefully doesn't have anything. And then we can take the Fable. And Ephemerate's good backup. Okay, so that's about as much hand disruption as you can get. And then clearing versus courtyard. Let's play courtyard for now. And then next turn clearing can maybe draw. Could also ephemerate again, depending on what they have in hand. Right, just a land, so no need to. Could ephemerate in their draw step before they can cast whatever they drew into. Yeah, maybe. Or I can just keep Ephemerate to protect my creature from removal. Let's try that instead. Eh, Pun found an Ajani. Pretty good. Where shall we hunt today? Take our turn. Find a Bowmasters. That's a good answer. So I can play Bowmasters, shoot a Jani, flicker it with Felia, and then shoot it again. So we're doing it. And then I guess Grief can't attack since they can still double block it. They could also, I suppose, double block Felia now. Yeah, that could work. Or I could Ephemerate Felia to save it. And then... Uh, Still take out a Jani. That's probably worth it. I guess I could have also shot the cat token, because if they transform a Jani into a planeswalker, I could have just attacked it. But it's a May ability, so they weren't forced to, and then if they maybe figure out another way to transform a Jani, we could be in trouble. But maybe that was still better. So Ephemerate's Bowmasters now. Shoot the cat so we can keep attacking. Flicker Grief. Can take Gigantha or cast another Grief. This is brutal. So maybe some sloppy plays near the end here. But didn't get punished for them. And now we can Flicker Bowmasters. Yeah, we just completely decimated the opponent's game plan. They only got to cast one spell this game. And that'll do it. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw, and yeah, we've got a ley line for protection, and then troll to reanimate, double bowmasters as backup. Opponent with a verdant. And for now, maybe play the godless shrine, wait on marsh flats to potentially fetch a surveil land later. Verdant gets theater, so opponent red black and keeps on top. All right, opponent on Jund and plots a highway robbery. So more of a combo deck maybe than uh, a mid-range disruptive deck. Can get just a basic swamp and source a draw. So for now, I think he reanimates and then I can surveil end of turn. But we still have swords available if needed. This currently a three turn clock. So we'll see if our opponent can do anything in the meantime. I see Arclight Phoenix. So maybe a buried alive Arclight deck. So swords exiling Phoenix is relevant. Could have also actually considered just not reanimating yet and keeping a Bowmasters to punish the card draw from robbery. But they might have waited another turn. Ooh, Dark Ritual. So yeah, buried alive here would be bad. So opponent gets back four copies of Arclight Phoenix. I can only exile one of them. And uh, yeah, opponent got to do their thing. Yeah, they needed the perfect hand and they definitely got it here. With my current hand, I don't think there's a chance of recovering. Maybe if I had Solitude with Ephemerate, we could stand a chance. Could also technically sort my own troll just to gain some life, but... Take 9, fall to 2. Can channel I Ganjo to answer another Phoenix, but uh, yeah, that's still gonna be game. So Leyline did not end up doing a whole lot. Maybe our opponent decides to draw a bunch of cards and we can still use the Bowmaster. But I think we'll still be a little short. Opponent draws two, take out one Phoenix. But there's still two going across and our opponent actually declined to draw now. So that also works. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. What do we think of our opener? Leyline for protection, and then grief, reanimate grief at the very least. Yeah, seems good. Could also reanimate a troll as a backup plan. Opponent on Jeskai. So, yeah, we can grief pitching bowmasters or pitching troll. Although I may need troll to just hit my land drops. Um, so I think grief pitching. Bowmasters is fine. And then we'll uh, reanimate, get a godless shrine here. And see what we're working with. Opponent on a Jeskai kind of control deck. Spell Snare could be effective since we do have some two drops they can counter. Double Swords, Brainstorm, Flage. So, yeah, nothing that we really stop with a ley line. Don't care too much about swords at the moment. Also, don't have any two drops for spell snare. So, brainstorm and flage are maybe the priority, even though they can eventually get flage back. Especially brainstorm good with a fetch land. Yeah, I'll take flage. And then we could see them uh, Swords Grief. And it's going to be a Discharge instead. So 
a lot of creature removal. We can uh, cycle troll and get our surveil land and play it. And then Bowmasters does get countered by Spell Snare. So it's not the best. Maybe your opponent taps out at some point. And I can still cast it for now. I'm going to be chaining together recruiters. And I guess if Bowmasters gets countered, we can maybe clear a path for Falia at some point. Could also get another discard effect to take away Spell Snare. So we got options. Could also just go Recruiter, get another Recruiter, and hope the 1-1s one eventually get there. And we know their hand. So Puns, pretty close to escaping Flage. So I may also need to get an answer for Flage here, which would be probably Solitude. But uh, yeah, with Spell Snare, Maybe it is just another recruiter for now. Although the one ones are probably not going to get the job done by themselves. But now if they were to get back Flage, I can play another recruiter, get Solemnity, and then exile Flage for good. Alright, put on drew another one. So now the coast is clear for Bowmasters. Which could force them to uh, source to plowshares it. Peddler could also take away Spell Snare. But the Juggernaut could still be kind of an issue to deal with. So I think just cast the Bowmasters now. Before they can Spell Snare. And then... We'll see if they get back Flage with a land. Solitude, decent answer to Flage. So can attack. And then recruiter for maybe the last recruiter. If I get grief, I can evoke it, but I'm not sure what I'm accomplishing with that. Taking a source to plowshares doesn't seem all that great. So I'll just postpone my decision once again. Yeah, I really want to get Falia going, but that's going to be difficult in the face of all this interaction. So attack. Maybe I do try Peddler and then hope they spell snare it here. You can always use Igancho as an answer to Juggernaut. Right, opponent just with Counterspell. Makes sense. So keeping the Spell Snare for later, in case I maybe had another 2-drop they needed to counter. Do we want to play Igancho? I guess at this point we don't need to worry about a uh, Juggernaut, so that's fine. Maybe allows me to play Recruiter and something else next turn. Still no fourth land for uh, Flage. Would love to find a flicker effect to keep Solitude on the battlefield as well. So try Recruiter again. Possible this gets countered. And then now I can maybe get Felia. That way if they tap out for Flage I can end of turn Felia. And uh, get the ball rolling. We're also at a point where we can hard cast Solitude so that helps. possible they're waiting for a sweeper. So I'm just gonna attack and keep up my interaction. Although then our opponent could maybe hit multiple land drops, play Flage with Counterspell backup, which would be bad. So maybe it's still reasonable to play an extra recruiter. And then now could see getting a Bowmasters. Or a Grief, to just cast Grief. Alright, 
right, still nothing, still not going to play Felia. Attack. And then I suppose we cast Grief, could also pitch Troll to just evoke it. Then I can still keep a mana for Felia and Solitude. But uh, yeah, let's just cast it and see what happens. Probably just gets countered. Yep. So now I don't have the mana for End of Turn Felia. Opponent Island cycling a Lorien Reveal to finally hit their fourth line drop. And goes for an Archive. They're close to escaping Flage a second time. And then to cycle troll or not to cycle it. I think I hang on to it since we're close to casting it. Now if our opponent does escape flage, one option we have is... Opponent's got to one ring, okay. I was gonna say if our opponent was gonna escape Flage, we could have Solitude exile our own creature to deny the life gain and then maybe attack back for lethal. But uh, the one ring adds an interesting twist. At least they're tapped out, so we can now maybe play Felia and flicker stuff. And if they draw, I need to play Felia before they play an island and keep up spell snare. Although they could now draw into white mana for swords. Which they did. So, still gonna hang on to the troll. Attack. And attempt to flick a recruiter. Opponent's gonna respond by exiling Felia. Or using another discharge works too. Although now our opponent's at one. And one ring is going to deal them one damage, so... Not sure what their plan is. I guess die to the one ring. Well, this was a very awkward game, opponent never getting back Flage. Although we did have some uh, answers at the ready. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. What do we think of our hands? Can Grief reanimate Grief? Although not on turn one, since we only have a tap land. So it's a bit of a clunky one. Felia could be fun with grief, but that's also going to take a while to set up. I think I'll still try it. At least we have some powerful tools. Start with backstreets. I'll look for a second land, which I can keep on top. And then I don't feel inclined to grief right now. Opponent red white keeps on top, so maybe an energy deck. So can uh, grief, and then instead of reanimating grief, immediately I can maybe try to play Felia, and then grief pitching troll seems acceptable. Could also, of course, discard troll and reanimate it, which is its own win condition. Which could also be decent. So maybe Grief pitching reanimate for now and then see what our opponent's working with before we decide whether to go down the Felia path or the Troll path. Okay, it is Energy with Ephemerate Solitude. Professor, Fable, multiple Solitudes. So we can't really stop that. Which is going to make it difficult to put Felia to use, as well as Troll, to be fair. So maybe I do just take Solitude, and then I might have to reanimate my Grief. Instead of trying Felia, since that's just not going to work. And then take another Solitude, and then our opponent can try to flicker their Professor at some point, and we can interact. Alright, so not the plan I had imagined, but that's why we 
agree first before we decide. And take another solitude. Can cycle troll. And Samewise. So Samewise is going to get back their fetch lane. Alright, that's a nice interaction. So get the Godless Shrine, maybe. And draw Ephemerate, that could be nice too. So Grief attacks. Do I need to Ephemerate Grief now? I think I'm fine to wait. And then the plan is end of turn Felia, keep up swords for any creature they try to target with Ephemerate. They might be able to play a Fable in the meantime. But then we'll be able to strip quite a few cards out of their hand. So I could have actually considered using Ephemerate on Grief in response to the fetch. But if they had a removal spell as their last card, we would have gotten punished. So, Fable resolves. I can still Ephemerate Grief now. And then the rebound gets another card, and then Felia flickers grief again. So that seems acceptable. Luckily the unknown card was not another solitude. So we can take Professor and then double Ephemerates. Samwise is gonna hang back. Take Ephemerates. Attack with Felia, hoping they don't double block. So we can sword the only blocker here. Could also get rid of their Shaman token, to be fair. And then get rid of it. Instead of flickering grief for Professor. And then I can sword Samwise. Leaving them with Fable, that's gonna let them discard and draw. Yeah, that's also an interesting thought. Versus flicker grief. Opponent blocks with, let's say, just Samwise, Ice Swords, Samwise, and then they still have a Shaman. But then next turn Felia can exile it. I think I still flicker Grief here. Since I don't put them on the double block, but we'll see. Opponent single blocks, so now we can exile Samwise. And get Grief back. Take the Professor, so they have fewer cards to get rid of with Fable as well. And then next turn when attacks, we can get rid of the Shaman token, hopefully. And the extra mana should not matter too much. But our opponent does get to discard and draw, so they might be able to find more action. Opponent discarded a Season Pyromancer, so yeah, I guess now the extra mana from the Shaman could actually matter. And Bolt Felia. Alright. That's too bad. So now Grief is not winning the race against the Shaman, the Reflection, and the Seasoned Pyromancer. So yeah, maybe getting rid of the token would have worked out a little bit better. But then Professor getting a lesson could have been bad too. So what do we want to draw? Like a Recruiter could be a fun start. Well, there you have it. Just gotta ask. So start by attacking. Play Recruiter. Do we recruit for another Recruiter or do we get another Felia? Bowmasters comes to mind. I don't think we're going for one of our Elementals. Although I can cast Grief, I can't quite cast Solitude for five. So if I get Felia, that's an answer to their tokens eventually. Bowmasters doesn't really take anything out except for their tokens. So I'll go Felia. And then hopefully Felia Flickering Recruiter can provide more action as well.
could also consider adding one Witch Enchanter to the deck as something to get with Recruiter that's both a land as well as a Disenchant. Ooh, Fury, that's brutal. And yeah, that's hard casts, so now they can compete with Reflection going forward. So, not sure how I draw out of this. I probably don't. Next turn opponent can copy Fury, and I die. Although they may not go for it if they're afraid of a Solitude. But anything I cast gets decimated. So yeah, the extra mana allowing them to cast Fury. So that small decision of do we go for the Shaman token, do we go for their hand, ended up having some pretty big ramifications. So in the end, the opponent's deck is doing something very similar to ours, except instead of attacking hands, they're attacking creatures with their red cards, which makes sense why they would win this matchup, since they're not a combo deck where hand disruption is absolutely necessary, and then once the game goes on for a while, they'll eventually find a Fury, which can decimate our board, and then Reflection's also good in these grindier matchups, where the first couple turns are not of the essence. So yeah, opponent definitely got this one. Okay, we're on the draw. We do not have any discard effects, but we do have removal with Solitude, Ephemerate Solitude. So, yeah, I'll give it a shot. So, against combo, we're gonna struggle. Against a creature deck, we have answers. Blue-black points more towards combo. So that could be bad. Although it could still be a Rakdos deck, I suppose. Bowmaster's a draw, so we're gonna... Just cycle the troll here, most likely. Opponent does the same. Well, if they reanimate the troll, we can answer it. And yep, that's what they do. And another goif as well. Well, now there's two nice targets for Solitude Ephemerate. So could do that now, actually, and wait on the troll. Solitude, pitching, probably the recruiter. And then ephemerates, exile both, and then we can start attacking. No point in rebounding the ephemerate. Yeah, maybe it's safer to do that now before opponent can interact with it. If they have, like, a removal spell for my solitude in response to ephemerate. Another Goyf gets exiled, so they're not going to get back. Opponent's back to 19, so they did get some life for their troubles. And now Peddler's interesting. So it can decide between Peddler, Bowmasters, and Felia. I think we just keep up uh, two mana for Felia. And hope they don't have anything too scary left that they can cast here. Psychic Frog. That's fine. And a Bobble. So our opponent's going to need to grow Psychic Frog to eat Felia. So that I don't get to um, flicker Solitude for free. But then they're going to have discarded most of their cards. Can just get basic Swamp. Don't think I need double white here. So play Felia. Opponent just has to discard one card to the Psychic Frog. And Peddler the draw. Basically trading Felia for a Psychic Frog here if I attack. And okay, well, opponent scoops it up. Works for me. So yeah, got to see this black-white flicker deck in action. It has some pretty ridiculous opening hands where you get to flicker your uh, grief with Ephemerate to take three cards away from the opponent. Felia is always a lot of fun if you can get it going, 
but it does have some weaknesses. Decks with a lot of creature removal can make it difficult to leverage any of your synergies, and Flage especially is a tough card for us to beat since the opponent can eventually escape it out of the graveyard. Our creatures tend to be on the smaller side, so three damage is enough to take them out, and then the Titan can often take over, so the only clean answer we have is Peddler exiling it from the opponent's hand. And then, uh, as we've said, our creatures do take a while to actually close out games, so we do give the opponents a few top decks near the end of the game after disrupting them initially to potentially get back into it. So I wish we had some black-white titan to help close out games for us, but I guess reanimating a troll of Casa Doom will have to do for now. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!